So this video is specifically for beginners who have never skated before and just bought their first pair of skates. We're going to be covering some of the basic moves that you should be learning, the drills that you should be practicing, and hopefully that will lead you into being able to do some of the other stuff in all my other videos, which is a lot of footwork and dancing and things like that. And yeah, so once you have all of the stuff that you need, it is time for you to learn how to skate. So stay tuned. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to tie your skates. I'm also including some graphics here with different techniques to tie your skates depending on the size of your feet or maybe some issues you have like rubbing or pain. The Moxie skate tongue is infamous for moving around, so I like to push it deeply in the opposite direction it naturally goes and then tie my laces tight to keep them in place. This is how you train your tongue to stay in place. When you get to the top portion, you have two options. Lace them all the way up or stop right here. You will see a lot of jam and rhythm skaters like to leave this portion of it loose because it gives their ankles more mobility. If you're a beginner, I recommend just lacing them all the way up so you're nice and secure in them. And later on, when you're more advanced, you can loosen them up. I like to lace them down for certain moves like leg extensions or if I'm bending down to pivot and things like that. If you lace them up, it's important to remember to lace them up and over the hooks first, not under. This advice comes from the manufacturer themselves. It's going to protect your hooks from falling out and it is a better way of locking your laces in place. I have really long laces, so I just double it up. I do this with my Converse too. My other skate laces are much shorter, so I don't do this. Now to safely stand up, I recommend sliding a leg under the other and placing both hands down, getting on a toe stop and pushing yourself up. To sit down, again, get on your toe stop or jam plug, bend down, both hands on floor, and sit to one side. The most important beginner concept to learn is your A's and V's. Whether you're standing still or moving, these are the safest positions to be in. If you are standing with your feet straight and parallel and find yourself moving forward or backward with no effort, it's because you're not standing in your A or V. I have an incline here and this is how I stand completely still. To begin moving forward, we're going to stand in our V-shape, knees bent, arms out to balance, and we're going to take little baby steps out in that V-shape. Just march slowly. Remember to keep your knees bent. That's another really important thing in skating. Straight legs are the quickest way to fall and injure yourself. The more bend, the better. Once you've got the march down, try gliding a bit longer with each foot. A move often taught to beginners to get them moving are bubbles. You are going from that V to A and then back again. You should really feel this move in your glutes and your inner thighs, two muscles that you'll be using a lot from here on out. You can also practice just bubbling forward without coming back. This is a good way to start practicing the plow stop, which will involve the same movement. For the plow stop, you will bubble out and in to come to a complete stop when you're skating regularly. The wider the bubble, the quicker you'll stop, so do not be afraid to open those legs wide. You'll want to kick out the heels as much as you can and push those toes to meet. Another way to stop, which you'll need to learn for jam plugs, is the T-stop. Here, one foot will fall behind and turn perpendicular to the other, and drag until it meets the other to form a T. There are a few ways to drag it. By just the toe wheels, which is what I naturally do, the two outer wheels, which is a way derby players stop, and then the two inner wheels, which is just a more comfortable way to stop as opposed to the outer wheels. I recommend practicing and knowing all three.
The last way we're going to learn to stop is the toe drag. It's the most popular way to teach beginners to stop, but it destroys your toe stop. Like the T-stop, one foot falls behind, but this time we'll get on its toe stop and drag to meet the other foot. I don't feel like it's the safest way to stop, but it is good to have it in your toolkit because you never know what you'll encounter when you're skating. It's important to learn how to fall safely, so you need to learn this early on. If you ever feel like you're about to fall, you want to teach your body to instinctively get in this skater stance, which is bending down with your arms fully forward and you're pushing your chest almost forward as well. Getting into this position helps you safely pick a, a butt cheek to fall on because you do not want to fall straight down. You'll injure yourself and even worse, break your tailbone. If you're falling backwards, you can actually stabilize yourself by getting into this position, which has saved me so many times. You'll also want to learn to bail. When I skate on the street, I always like to be inside of some grass because I know if something goes down, that's where I want to go. Use your momentum to jump into the grass and slow yourself down by running on it a bit. The grass will help stop your wheels. You can also just throw yourself into the grass, but be mindful of that because you still can hurt yourself. Now to some important drills to do. You will want to learn to cannonball, which is fundamental because it's a part of falling safely and a part of moves like shooting the duck and the coffin. Much like your skater stands for falling, bend down, push your chest forward towards your knees. Another drill to learn when starting off includes balancing on one foot. You can start tiny with just a light lift off the floor and test yourself every time to hold it longer. Then you'll do the same thing, but in motion. This will show you which leg is your stronger one, which will come in handy as you learn more advanced skills. Other drills are crossovers and cross unders. Just practice lifting the legs over one another and under. Both directions, both legs. Once you get that down, you can do the crossovers in your A's and your cross unders in your V's. The slight turn of the foot actually makes it easier and safer to cross your legs, but don't forget to bend your knees. This is the basis of the downtown. If you ever want to learn that dance move, I have a tutorial for it on my channel. Another skill to drill is crossing your legs while skating forward. Here, you also have to bend your knees. This slight lean when skating forward is you skating on your edges or the edge of your wheels, which is important to learn but needs a whole other video to explain. I'm doing it very exaggerated for you to be able to see it, but this lean is important for turning and moving side to side to avoid objects. I have a tutorial for slaloming and I give a more in-depth explanation about edges, so check that out. The best way to practice skating on your edges is doing it in a big circle. Don't forget to practice on both sides for everything in skating. There's also the infinity or eight drill. Next, I'm covering manuals. To get started, you want to stand in a staggered position and get comfortable with lifting that front leg up. Don't just practice it on your dominant foot, practice it with both. You should also practice lifting up the front foot while you're in motion. Now, a manual is when the front foot brings its toes up and the back foot brings its heel up. So again, practice this standing still, both sides, then in motion on both sides. This is the basis of a spin. In a spin, the back wheels of the front foot and the front wheels of the back foot should be aligned. So get really comfortable holding that position as well. Transitions are next and will probably be one of the harder things you learn. There are a ton of ways to transition. I'm going to cover some important ones. Here we have a manual transition. So just like we practice in our manuals, the lead foot lifts up its toes and we're going to lead it out and around and put it down while the other gets on the toes, goes around, lands down. Someone once described it like driving on a highway and your lead foot is going to take the upcoming exit. Similarly, there are heel-heel transitions and toe-toe transitions, which sound a lot harder, but in practice, I promise, are still pretty easy. The key is to do one foot, put it down, 
and then do the other and put that one down. Both feet in the same position at the same time is a more advanced skill that you'll probably learn later on. I know I sound like a broken record, but remember to bend your knees and practice doing everything both ways on both sides. Now the harder transition is the one where you completely lift your foot off the floor. One foot will lift, turn 180, then land, and then immediately the other lifts 180s and lands. This one is hard because you're completely off one foot and standing in first position or second position. I give some good tips about this stance in my side surfing video if you want to give it a view. But to get to this transition, I would skate forward, lift a leg, get nice and balanced, and then turn to plant it. Again, bend your knees, and you also want to turn your head and look first in the direction you're turning. Then your body and your feet will follow. To start skating backwards, we're going back to the bubbles. Really use your glutes to push your legs out and bring them back in. Now, just how we marched forward, we're going to march backwards. This time with our legs in an A position, knees bent, arms out for balance, and having inspected our area to make sure it's nice and safe, we'll march backwards. The marching then turns into little glides. Once you're comfortable, you can learn to carve to skate backwards. And I like this move because it puts me in a good position to look back so I don't navigate blindly. In your staggered position, the front foot will either carve C-shapes or backward C-shapes, depending on which foot, to push you back. You're pushing on that outer edge to get momentum to move back. And then the back foot will be the one steering. So since I'm going straight back here, that foot is pretty still. A lot of people ask me how I stop going backwards and I mostly plow reverse T or spread eagle and turn to stop which I probably need a whole other video to explain as well. This video took forever to make and even longer to edit. But that is it for the beginner's crash course. There might be a part two, I haven't decided yet, but if you have a request for anything else that you wanna learn, doesn't have to be beginner related at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up so that other beginners can find it. I want to get back into making more Footwork Friday videos because I've had a lot of positive feedback on that. So look out for the next one. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.